Morning folks, welcome to another episode of Motorcyclist MC Commute. Today we're going to be riding Triumph's new 2021 Trident 660 Naked Bike Roadster. This is an all new motorcycle from the Hinkley brand. So let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride. Well folks, here it is, Triumph's 2021 Trident 660. This is an all new naked roadster style motorcycle from the british firm now to understand this motorcycle's positioning you have to really understand where it came from this motorcycle is sort of loosely based on triumph's street triple six seven five now over the years that motorcycle has morphed into a more premium offering and triumph has had this void in its model lineup you have to remember when the street triple 675 was first introduced for the 2007 model year that thing cost eight thousand dollars now it costs well over 10. enter the 2021 trident 660 priced at you guessed it eight thousand dollars this motorcycle is powered by triumph's legendary in line three dual overhead cam 12 valve engine now compared to the 675 it's got a little bit less stroke it is 660 cc in displacement triumph also made a host of changes inside that engine but more or less it's the same awesome character and feel of that 675 cc engine from back in the day which isn't a bad thing now what i really like about this motorcycle is the styling look at that bike look how gorgeous it looks look at that front fender the front led seven inch headlight look at the tank with the union jack and how slim it is i love how the engine is exposed in the air there is not a lot of wiring everything is very clean i really like that the swing arm linkage is hidden within the swing arm so even though it doesn't look like there's a linkage there is that is awesome good job triumph we are paying attention to the details and we know that you are too so thank you look at those calipers yes they're old school slide type but they have this nice brushed aluminum on the side this is a very aesthetically pleasing motorcycle and a vehicle that is absolutely commiserate with the triumph name i love looking at this thing i would buy this bike just to look at it but enough talking about it let's swing a leg over it and tell you what it's like to ride all right folks a good old-fashioned mechanical key embossed with triumph's Union Jack logo, very nice. I like that, I'm happy already. Let's notch her into gear and away we go. Now right away, sitting on this 2021 Triumph Trident 660. Man, this thing is a very cozy little street bike. I like how narrow the seating position is. I like the contour of the rider's seat. It supports your rear end very nicely. The bend of this handlebar, it's narrow. It's nice and narrow, which complements the slim riding position of this motorcycle. Yet it has it still has a pleasing bend to it. The rearward sweep isn't excessive. I know that I say that a lot, but a lot of street bike manufacturers like to go crazy with the sweep. This handlebar has a nice rise to it. It's not too high, it's not too low. And I just like the bend. If I had any critique to it overall would be that it just is a little bit narrow the handlebar is a little bit narrow but like i said that narrowness follows in form with the narrowness of the seating position and the motorcycle as a whole and away we go folks cable actuated clutch augments the six speed transmission the chain final drive that exits on the left hand side of the motorcycle so very conventional by today's naked bike but street bike standards now 
riding this motorcycle really to understand that this Trident 660s to really understand where Triumph came from as far as its Roadster and naked bike platform. So in 2007, we talked about this earlier, Triumph introduced its Street Triple 675, which was a naked bike based on the Daytona 675 sport bike, which was introduced the prior year. Now, effectively, what Triumph's done is this Trident 660 really it replaces the original Triumph Street Triple 675. Now over the years the Street Triple 675 has evolved. It is now has more displacement, a little bit higher specification sort of. And with that higher specification also comes higher price that motorcycle is way more expensive than it was when it came out in 2007 when a bike came out in 2007 it was priced at guess what eight thousand bucks same price as this bike so realistically that's what triumph's done the street triple 675 evolved into a more performance based middleweight naked bike sort of and this thing has taken the position of the more entry level bike which was vacated by the street triple 675 a lot of people haven't put it that way but that's really what has gone on with triumph and i'm happy that an affordable inline three bike is back because this bike has a lot of things going for it. This 660cc i3 engine, this is the same engine that's used in the Daytona 675 Street Tipple 675. Retains a 70, I think it's 74, 72 millimeter bore, I can't remember. But it's got the same bore with a little bit shorter stroke, which nets a 6 60 cc displacement so a little less stroke this engine revs to just north of 10,000 rpm it puts out right around 72 horsepower at the business end of the michelin road 5 tire 72 horsepower for reference, the old Triumph Street Triple 675, that thing made right around 90 horsepower, 92, 93 horsepower. So this thing's about 20 horsepower less than that motorcycle. And you definitely feel it. It doesn't have the, the top end pull of that bike or even the the upper mid-range pull of that bike but what it does what it does have it has a very good amount of torque this thing puts out maximum torque from right around 3500 rpm all the way to red line so it's got a lot of usable grunt to get out of the hole and jet around town and i like that the transmission the internal gear ratios were tweaked a little bit just to help this motorcycle come out of the hole in the lower four gears. Yet in top gear it doesn't have a ridiculously high RPM which we'll see in a little bit. We're on the freeway. Yes some turns finally now this is where the motorcycle really is in its element. I love how light and how well this bike steers. This bike offers awesome steering. It is so sharp and responsive. 417 pounds with a full 3.7 gallons of fuel. 3.7 gallons of fuel, it's a little bit small. If you recall, the old Street Triple 675 had 
about 4.67 gallons, 4.6 gallons of fuel, so nearly a gallon less fuel capacity on this bike. Realistically, I like the shape of the fuel tank aesthetically, so I'm going to give Triumph a hall pass with the small-ish capacity of the fuel tank, but it'd be nice if this thing had four and a half gallons of gas. More gas is always better. Still a very maneuverable motorcycle. It changes directions exceptionally well, which makes it very fun and playful. Not only does it make it fun and playful, but if you were someone who didn't have a lot of riding experience and you would feel real comfortable on this bike just because it's so easy to get it pointed in the right direction. It's very light and airy. Yet even though it's light and airy, it still has a good degree of stability. You know, when you give this thing the beans, it's not gonna get out of control or, or shake its head or feel unnerving. Just about five inches of suspension travel fore and aft. Now, the suspension is another highlight of this vehicle. Not only do I like the aesthetic of the inverted fork, but it works really well. The damping is surprisingly good for a little street bike like this. It delivers pretty good ride quality over bumps and still has a fair degree of road holding when you're leaning on it through the turns. Yes, of course, the rebound damping is a little bit quick, but it's controlled, and that's a big deal. Even though this suspension doesn't have any damping adjustment, I wouldn't really just write it off. I, I like the suspension on this motorcycle. Triumph did a good job with it. And away we go, guys. Top gear, 80 miles per hour. The engine is pulling just south of 6,000 RPM. Now, there is some, there's actually quite a bit of buzz through the handlebar. The foot bags are, are pretty devoid of vibration but through the handlebar you definitely feel the engine's vibes. Now we've talked about how these engines vibrate a lot. This engine configuration probably one of the only knocks it really has is that the engine vibrates a lot. But to be fair this is an old engine platform and apparently Triumph is okay with having that level of vibration. I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker for me. I, I've i just always liked this powertrain so much. It's just like an old friend to me so I can live with its squawks and little hiccups. It's kind of like having a best friend who always leaves the toilet seat up. You just live with it. That's how this, this i3 powertrain from Triumph is to me. No cruise control. Heated grips are an accessory. This motorcycle is not fitted with heated grips. This engine employs Triumph's ride by wire throttle system. The ride by wire throttle has good response. The throttle response is it's it's accurate with it, without it being overly sensitive or sluggish. I like the throttle response on this bike a lot. Compared to other street bikes though, I guess you could say it's a little bit muted. But based on its positioning, I think a slightly muted throttle is okay. 
And of course, if the throttle is a little bit muted, you know what the solution is? You just twist it harder and faster. So who, ca who even cares? Just listen to that engine. God, I love these Triumph I3s. It sounds so awesome. And a zippy bike indeed. We got up to 90 miles per hour there. Revving her through the gearbox. An electronic quick shifter would also be a nice touch. Triumph offers that as an accessory as well. I love electronic up and down quick shifters. Speaking of up and down shifting, this six speed gearbox is equipped with a slipper function clutch. So if you downshift in too low of a gear for the vehicle speed that you're traveling in, the rear wheel will not lock up and it will mitigate any instability. It's a nice touch if you're learning how to ride, you don't really know how low of a gear you should downshift for the speed you're traveling at. Now because this is a naked bike, we don't have any wind protection, our mitts are in the air, and you definitely feel the air hitting you. But realistically, because this is more of an urban motorcycle, I can totally live with the lack of wind protection. Again, the engine vibration, you definitely feel it through the handlebar. I think if you were slogging on the freeway for an hour, that vibration would get annoying. But for smaller rides and jetting around town and quick little candy carving sessions, it is absolutely just fine. We rode this motorcycle after dark and the headlight does a nice job of shedding light on the road ahead. I really like the silhouette of this round LED headlight. Not only does it work good when you're actually riding after dark, but just its silhouette, it looks really good. It's a very aesthetically pleasing component of the motorcycle. The tail is equally as delicious. I love the clean under tail cowling that it has that extends all the way from the top of the LED tail light to the bottom of the subframe. It looks so good. It almost looks like a sport bike, a racy sport bike. So good job, Triumph. You really paid attention to the styling details of this bike. Don't think we're not noticing because we are. Speaking of the tail light, I also like the, the configuration of the license plate bracket. It's mounted on the swing arm. It's nice and clean. It leaves the tail section in the open air for everyone to see. There are also LED turn signals, which again, helps you be seen on the road and gives the vehicle a nice modern appearance. All right, folks, now it's time to have some real fun. We already talked about the handling. I really like the steering of this motorcycle. It is extremely nimble and it goes exactly where you want with minimal effort. And up a tight canyon corner course like this, it is a great motorcycle to be riding. I also like the OE fitted Michelin Road 5 tires. These tires kick butt. They have good grip, good stability. They heat up fast. They work in a wide variety of road surfaces. Everywhere from nice, grippy, dry asphalt to even damp roads. It's a really good, versatile tire. And it's cool that this Trident 660 comes with premium rubber from Michelin. 
Now, this motorcycle, we talked about the suspension, it has surprisingly good damping. A lot of motorcycle manufacturers get their OE damping settings incorrect. But Triumph takes great pride in its engineering and road testing department. And it really shows in how well this chassis as a whole works. Now, this Trident 660 comes with two riding modes. We have a road riding mode and a rain roading riding mode and the rain riding mode mellows out the power so if you were a new rider you could theoretically ride this motorcycle in rain mode and feel more comfortable until you get a hang of its power delivery then you can graduate to road mode Rain mode also works well if you're riding in the rain and you want the engine's power output to be more modest to help maximize grip against the business end of that 180 Michelin Road 5 tire. Now the riding modes are also tied into Triumph's traction control setup. Now we've talked about Triumph's traction control in many other videos and while it's neat that this motorcycle comes with traction control, Triumph's traction control system is much more rudimentary compared to other manufacturers these days. There's no IMU, it uses wheel speed sensors, throttle, position, gear position, and engine RPM as the variables which it uses to help understand if the traction limit has been exceeded. And then it applies correction that way. But again, realistically a bike that only puts out 72 horsepower, this bike doesn't even need traction control. And then you factor in Triumph's lovable engine character and how effective this engine is at putting power to the ground. And it's just another reason why this bike doesn't even need traction control. The engine is traction control. The brakes, triple disc hydraulic brakes slow this motorcycle down. I like the nice high quality metal brake line which is used for and aft. Now these brakes are not radial mount. The front brakes are not radial mount. It's a old school slide type two piston caliper and even though it's an old school slide type caliper the brakes actually work pretty good on this motorcycle. Now, they're not super bike brakes by any means, but you'd be surprised by how much lever feel the brakes have and how responsive they are. So, a lot of that has to do with just the calibration of the fork. Like when you put input into the brake lever, the fork has a decent level of support and that allows the motorcycle to slow down very nicely. So even though the sum of the components are actually pretty rudimentary, the function is actually quite good. So good job, Triumph. We like how you did a lot with a little. Again, we're paying attention. I also like the oversized back brake. I'm a big rear brake kind of guy. I love an oversized sharp feeling rear brake and the rear brake on this motorcycle. It's awesome. The only probably caveat I have with these brakes is the ABS programming can be a little bit aggressive but again considering the the end user of this bike I think a little bit 
aggressive ABS programming, as in it, it kind of can come in a little bit early, the ABS system, I think that's totally fine. And it wouldn't be off-putting uh, for me. I would still absolutely enjoy riding this bike and purchasing this bike because it just works so good as an overall package from the engine to the handling to the braking to the sound and of course the styling this is a nice bike now TP, keeping tabs on everything is this nice round face digital dash this is a new dash display for Triumph. We haven't ever seen it before. And it looks awesome. I like the black background with the white fonts. I'm a big dark mode mo guy, so that makes me happy. I like how tasteful the display is. It looks old school, but it functions new school. Now, the various Electronic settings on this dashboard are manipulated via this four button switch gear on the left handlebar. So that's how you navigate through its menu systems. There's also a, a check box which you use to, whoa, look at that bobcat. Look at that bobcat. That thing's huge. That was sick. That was sick. So it uses a checkbox here to activate the various settings. So you can turn the display dimmer up or down. You can go and see the fuel mileage, which we're registering 39.2 miles per gallon, which is a hint better than the Daytona Moto 2 765 sport bike that we rode a couple weeks ago. I think that was like 37.5. And here's the riding modes. So road, rain, bike setup, TC. You can manually disable the trash control if you want to do a wheelie. You cannot manually disable the ABS, which is a bit of a bummer, but we get it. But I wish you could you could manually disable ABS because if you could, you could do rear brake slides, and I love rear brake slides. You can also customize the function of this display. So instead of the fuel, it's gonna have something else there. So you can tune that to your liking. And there also is Bluetooth connectivity. And away we go. Yes, wheelie time. I love how easy this bike is to wheelie. Maintenance. Now, because this engine has shorter stroke and doesn't rev as high as its 675 counterpart, Triumph was able to extend the maintenance intervals on this motorcycle. So after the initial 600 mile service, in which you change the oil this motorcycle doesn't need another oil change until 10,000 miles every 10,000 miles it requires an oil and filter change 20,000 miles for an air filter and valve inspection there are 12 valves inside this engine and the clearances need to be checked every 20,000 miles so pretty neat that Triumph was really able to extend the maintenance intervals on this motorcycle. A lot of folks aren't even going to ride 10,000 miles in a year, so Triumph recommends changing the engine oil and filter on an annual basis for those of you who do not accrue 10,000 miles per year. Pretty neat, pretty neat. There's also a maintenance interval tracker setting inside the menu which helps you keep tra tabs on that if you're bad at making notes like I am. Well folks there it is Triumph's 2021 Trident 660. 
I really like this motorcycle. When I ride this motorcycle, it brings me back to 13 years ago when we were riding Triumph's Street Triple 675. A lot of that DNA is in this motorcycle and it brings back fond memories. I really like this i3 engine from Triumph. They've been building it for forever now and every time I twist the wrist on this bike with that engine configuration, I become a believer. I also really like the handling. It is nimble. It's very easy to ride. It steers super sharp. I love start sharp steering bikes. Suspension is above average for its components. Same with the brakes. These brakes are surprisingly effective at slowing down this 417 pound bike. And the styling. I love the styling on this motorcycle. Triumph. Make more motorcycles look like this. That under, that clean under tail. That aesthetically looking good looking swing arm. I like how the linkage, the rear shocks linkage is hidden within the swing arm. What an awesome styling touch triumph and that huge seven inch LED headlamp. That is awesome. A very aesthetically appealing motorcycle. All right, folks, let's do some Q and A on the old Instagram machine. Let us go straight to the top. A good first bike or a good second bike? That's a great question. This motorcycle would be a good first bike and or a good second bike. It's got a low seat height. It's very compact, very manageable power. This is a motorcycle that you could get being a new rider and you wouldn't outgrow right away. You know, a lot of the 300s and the 500s, you're going to buy them and then 30 days you're gonna get sick of them. This bike you could buy, you could learn how to ride on it, you put it in rain mode and the power is more gentle and even more friendly and you won't get sick of it in six months. Uh, conversely, if you already have a bigger bike and you want something that's kind of fun and peppy and nimble for the city, maybe you want to have your significant other ride it, this would be a good bike for that. So I would say both. Great question. Those black bits on the side of the tank, grippy rubber or slippery plastic. I really like the ergonomics of this motorcycle. It's not a very fast motorcycle, so realistically you don't really have to hang on to it very much because it just doesn't accelerate fast enough or brake hard enough to really get your body to to move too much. But I like it. You know, it's very easy to squeeze the the tank with my legs and you know the seat has a good grip. It's not too slippery. Those tank pieces and the cutouts are very nice to grip the tank with your knees. So very good job, Triumph. Not slippery at all. How annoying to read is the small gauge cluster and LCD screen? Well, I'd be lying if I said it's not a little bit annoying. You know, I like the big six inch rectangular dash displays. Those are my favorite because they're big, bold, bright, easy to read. But I like what Triumph's doing. I like how they put in the effort. They put in the effort to have a stylish, instrument display that pays homage to motorcycles of old. After all, remember, this is a Triumph Trident. Triumph used this monkey air in its motorcycle lineup back in the late 60s. So they've infused this classic styling, classic character with a modern touch. So yes, even though it's a little bit cumbersome to look at, I like that Triumph put in the effort. And if you put in the effort, you're usually going to be an, a winner in my book. Cheaper than a street twin. Does it feel cheaper? This motorcycle, despite this motorcycle being manufactured in Thailand, that's right, this motorcycle does not come finally assembled in Hinckley, England. It comes final assembly in Thailand from Triumph's Thailand factory. The fit and finish on this motorcycle is very good. There's only a couple gripes. The cable clutch adjuster, that thing feels really cheap. It's already starting to corrode a little bit. Uh, besides that little small gripe, just that one little component, this bike is well put together and you really wouldn't know it's 
built in Thailand. That's how good it is put together. This or the Suzuki Jixus 750. Oh, God, why'd you have to do that to me? Well, I love Jixus 750. It hauls way more butt than this bike, but this bike looks way cooler, so you choose. If you want a bike that's a little bit more capable in terms of performance, Suzuki. If you want a bike that looks cool and is more nimble and smaller and be, and be better for riding for someone who's new, maybe this Triumph Trident would be it. But that's a great question. This or an MT-07? I haven't really ridden the new MT-07. If I had to compare this compared to the old MT-07, this bike for sure. But Yamaha's done some new things with its 2021 MT-07, so I can't comment which bike is better until I ride the MT-07. Stay tuned. There will be an MC commute on the 2021 MT-07 within the next 60 days. You heard it here first. All right, folks, how does it compare to the SV650? I love the SV650 and the SV650X, but this Triumph i3 engine is just awesome. The more cylinders, the better. Of course, I'm a, I'm a good old-fashioned V-Twin fan as well, but they're both great bikes. I'd have to say that... Oh god, that's such a hard comparison. They're both great bikes. We'll have to ride a new SV650 and compare it that way one day. Did you measure the wet weight? This bike weighs 417 pounds, topped off 3.7 gallons of gas. It feels much lighter than that 417 pound curb weight. Again, we talked about the steering a lot. This thing is super sharp, super agile, super thin, very easy easy to put where you want because the seat's so low and the riding position so narrow it feels much lighter than it is well folks would i spend my eight thousand dollars on this triumph trident 660 i would i really like this bike a lot the street triple 765 and some of the other triumph bikes Triumph makes these days, they're just way too expensive for what you get. This motorcycle harkens back to the original value Triumph had many, many years ago. So for $8,000, yes, I would buy this motorcycle. Well done, Triumph. Make more motorcycles like this. Well, folks, that's a wrap of Triumph's 2021 Trident. 660 MC Commute. Log on to MotorcyclistOnline.com. That's where all of my content lives. Check out the motorcycle review section. I think we've done 18 or 19 reviews this year. It's a lot. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs it down if you thought it was really stupid. And we'll see you guys next time. And girls next time. Thanks for watching.